there my little lovelies so today we are going to finally make the bra cups now i believe this is the mock-up um i finally got around to cutting out the fabric which i did not record i just basically cut out as i normally do use the pins to like mark where it is cut around the pins to allow for steam allowance because in the patterns that i make i don't really include seam allowance usually so yeah, I pinned things together, I didn't do a zigzag stitch to keep it from fraying, I think I kind of just forgot, but I just basically pinned the left side and right side of the cups together, sewed along that, um, and then I would go upstairs to iron it out nicely, because I want to iron the sides out so that way I can do like another stitch along the sides of the seam to help it lay flat and make it look nicer. Um, and then afterwards, I would take the top piece, pin it to the top of the cups, and then sew along that, do basically the same thing, iron it out, and then do another uh, top stitch across it on each side of the seam to once again make it look nice and pretty. And yeah, the fabric that I'm using is an old bed sheet that I got from the thrift store, so it is very, very, very flimsy. So after I kind of made the cup shapes, it just didn't really hold the shape all that much, which was very unfortunate, but like, it, I know, I feel like it would still fit me, because when I uh, tried it on my body, it still mostly fit. So yeah. That's basically what I did. And then I also have like the side pieces, the pieces of the bodice itself. Uh, those pieces, I just did basically the same thing. I stitched them together, ironed it out, did a top stitch on either side of the seam. I had to alter the back a bit though, because I wanted to make this like lace up in the front. So... Um, I had to like leave enough room for the front and then in the back, um, I made the back panels too wide so I will have to change that eventually. I really don't like fitting things on myself, especially in the back, like the front is fine, the front I can just easily pin but the back I am not flexible enough to reach all the way back there and pin stuff, and it's like very uncomfortable to do as well, and I always accidentally stab myself, which is very annoying. I need to like, I really need to push up making a mannequin on my to-do list. Either that or find a body double that has the exact same measurements as me that wouldn't bleed when they're stabbed and wouldn't mind being stabbed. Which is basically a mannequin. So yeah. And it's basically all that I am going to do in this video. Just some more sewing. Just some more pinning. Just some more attaching. I didn't actually attach the cups to the bodice yet. Because I'm going to use this as like my lining. And I didn't want to attach it to the bodice yet. I'm actually not too sure how I'm gonna attach the cups to the bodice because I am going to make like um, a bodice layer with my pretty fabric and I'm going to make like um, another layer of the cups with the pretty fabric with some interfacing as well because I decided that's how I'm going to be making the cups strong and hold its shape and just make into cups so yeah um i'm thinking of like attaching the like one side of the cups like maybe the nice side of the cups to the two fabrics of the bodice, like the nice layer of the bodice and the uh, lining of the bodice. And then I'm gonna do the same with the lining layer of the cups. 
that way I like, kind of encase all the raw edges on the inside and then I'm definitely going to like iron it out and then I'm going to probably do a top stitch around the cup as well um just to ensure that the cause, like the fabric the nice fabric that I have is synthetic satin so I can't really turn the heat up too high so it doesn't really hold its shape either because I don't like I don't want to turn the heat up too high, but at the same time, if I don't, it will just not flatten. But then I don't want to accidentally melt the fabric onto my iron because I don't want to deal with cleaning the iron. So yeah, I'm just stuck with a seam that is never fully flat whenever I'm working with this fabric. I never realized that this is such a pain to work with. I mean, on the bright side, I don't have to do a zigzag stitch because I don't know what's wrong with the tension in my machine, but whenever I do a zigzag stitch with like all of these very light fabrics, it just scrunches the fabric up a lot. And like, I've tried turning the tension all the way down to like one, but it doesn't really help, so... The thing, the, the nice thing with the satin is that it is plastic, so I can just, you know, just burn the edges, which is very, very nice. Because then I don't have to deal with fraying. I just have to be careful I don't burn too much because I don't want it to be like too bulky or noticeable. Um, so yeah. I'm pretty sure I was watching the uh, newest episode of Project Runway while I'm doing this as well. I'm not sure when Project Runway updates, I think it's on Wednesdays? But I do check in every week or so to see what new episode there is. I really, really, really like the whole in innerwear as outerwear episode. It was really, really nice to see. Like, I remember I really, really liked Britney's and Rami's designs. They were gorgeous. Oh, and, and Carson's. They were all beautiful and, oh my goodness, I want to wear them. But, yeah. You can probably tell that I really like inner, inner wears, outer wear, because I am basically making a corset. And corsets are supposed to be worn on the inside of clothes, usually. But like, who wouldn't want to wear a course on the outside? It's gonna be so cute. Um, and yeah, that is me trying on the cups and thinking that they look decent. Those are the sides of the bodice. And those are the pattern pieces of the bodice, because I didn't really label which um, piece was which. So it got confusing real quick. Because like, the pieces are a bit different, but like it's only different slightly because like the angle that this top piece has might be different from the angle that this piece has and like the top of that piece might be slightly shorter than the top of that other piece so it's kind of confusing but I labeled it better when I was cutting out the fabric from my nice fabric because I just use Cause like, when I was cutting out the nice fabric, I decided that I did not have enough pins to do the pin method that I really liked, so I just used chalk. Um, so I used pins instead to mark where the bottom of each piece was, and then where the side seams connected with. Because like, the two panels in the front are easily are easy to identify, but like the two panels in the back are the ones that are hard to identify. So just mark which panel was supposed to go next to the side seam, the bottoms of the panels, so then I can just figure it out from there. And yeah, back to Project Runway. I didn't actually get a chance to look at the new episode now that I think about it. I was mostly just listening to it. But uh, I don't have anything to say about it because I, I didn't get a chance to look at the designs. I mean, I did get to see Anna's process with the bleach. And yeah, you should not just leave bleach in, you should definitely rinse it out. Cause otherwise, um, 
yeah bleach is not supposed to go on the skin it's not something you should touch at all with your bare skin um though i wonder why she couldn't have rinsed it afterwards is it because she wouldn't have enough time for it to dry i don't know i've never really worked with bleach and fabric before i mean i did use bleach to bleach that like small strand of embroidery thread and yeah i did actually rinse it out right after i didn't leave it in to dry yeah i think you're supposed to rinse it out right after you use the bleach like you soak it in the bleach for a bit and then you rinse the bleach out i wonder what would happen if you don't rinse it out because like the bleach i was using i'm pretty sure it was like very not very heavy like not very toxic bleach because i was able to touch it i probably shouldn't have touched it but like i was able to touch it when i was like fishing out the piece of embroidery stuff um but yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just like household cleaning bleach so it shouldn't be as toxic as like fabric bleach I do know that bleach is very bad for uh, your skin and just your body in general because I have bleached my hair at home. If you look closely at my hair, you can see that the ends are lighter than the roots. This is not because I go swimming. I do know that if you go swimming a lot, your hair kind of goes like that, but like I just bleached my hair a lot with box dye bleach. Not the smartest idea, but it works. Um, yeah, I remember that it smelled horrible. It was so bad. It kept on burning my eyes, even though I wear glasses. Uh, so yeah, bleach is not something you should play around with. And I remember hearing these horror stories of people bleaching their clothes, but then the bleach was so strong they left it in for too long that it just disintegrated the fabric itself and then just tore apart and like oh my god no that is traumatizing so yeah that is probably one of the reasons why i never really use bleach on clothes like my hair it's fine it'll grow back but clothes fabric when you only have a certain amount of this fabric that you got like years years back that you know you cannot find a replica of ever again oh jeez if you ruin that uh you just can't go back anymore that is probably why i always have like i'm always so scared to cut fabric because in my mind i just know that if i cut this wrong ever so slightly if I just like mess it up a little bit, then it's ruined. It's absolutely ruined. I can't use that piece of fabric anymore. Well, I can't, but I can't use that piece of pattern that I cut out anymore. I'll have to like cut out new fabric. And then depending on how much fabric I have, I might not have enough. Yeah, it, it's scary. Luckily, I have a bunch of the pink satin fabric. So I'm thinking of maybe using it to like make a skirt or a pair of pants or something. I don't want to work with pants because working with a top and a bust is hard enough. I don't need to worry about the butt. Oh jeez, until I get mannequin, I refuse to drape pants. It's gonna be such a pain, it's gonna be such a hassle. I tried making a pair of pants once. It was horrible because I made it for someone with no butt. But unfortunately, I do have a butt and humans do have butts. So I kept on sliding off in the back. Because I didn't make it high enough in the back. I should have just traced a pan pattern I had. Oh jeez, I'm an idiot. But yeah, I also want to make a skirt because, you know, Barbie. But then again... Hmm... I do have this like nice white lace. I wore it as like kind of a semi belt once in this outfit. It was like these nice light wash cargo jeans. They were like straight legged, um, very white decay. So I'm thinking I could also wear that bottom with the top, but I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. 
Hmm, I think I'll figure it out once I have the top ready. I'll see if I can style it with anything I have. If not, I will make something. Maybe like a cute matching set or something. Hello. So, update. I finished the cups and they look very flat, but they fit okay ish. Um, and I also finished the corset portion. You can't really see how the fabric's very flimsy. But I am mostly done with the mock up. I didn't actually attach it all together because I'm thinking of just using this as my lining. It fits me quite well, it fits me decently enough. I'm quite happy with it. Um, so what I have to do now is cut out the shapes from my nice fabric. Uh, sew it all together. I will probably have to add some interfacing to the cups, either that or use like some old bra pads or something. Um, and yeah. I think that is what we are going to do.